very much. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions from the floor? Uh, Ms. Shirley, I think that maybe you, you might be able, if you have your question still, send it in by email or in the chat function. Yep. You can email it to me now, Ms. Shirley. Okay. So this would be a good time to bring in Officer Leviste from uh, Highway Patrol. Welcome back. Oh, thank you, thank you. I just want to make sure that uh, everybody can hear me here. This is the first time I'm going to be using this uh, this this laptop here for Zoom. I just want to make sure everything's working properly. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Uh, thanks for having me. It's it's, it's been a while uh, since I've been able to attend uh, one of our MAC meetings, and and uh, the area of El Sobrani has been actually pretty active on our on our end. Um, the first thing I want to start with is obviously the speed on Dam Road. The the thing that's always been an issue. Um, and in the in the past uh, month or so, uh, myself and uh, several other motor officers have been going down there and and really heavily uh, um, enforcing the speed down there, um, especially near the um, uh, Milton um, near May, and uh, we've we've been. Uh, issuing numerous citations in the area. In fact, we're starting to cite the same people over and over again. So I think um, um, we're getting, we're, we're, we're getting our, our, our message across. Um, in fact, I'm starting to see, when I'm down there, I'm starting to see other speeders giving other drivers a heads up that I'm like at a certain location. Like I'll start seeing like people flashing their high beams and pointing. So, so obviously people know that I'm down there and, and, and that's, the, that's a good thing. Um, I've also been doing a lot of uh, enforcement up on the hill uh, with uh, um, stop signs. Uh, we were getting uh, complaints for specific stop signs. Um, so I'd go out there and write a, a, a handful of citations, and, and uh, I've been pretty proactive up there as well. Um, the next point I wanted to hit was, um, oh, kind of stemming from the speed on Dam Road. An, an arrest was made. Um, a couple of weeks back for uh, for a speeder. Now, this particular person, I was, I cited her for speed, an excessive speed at that, um, down there at Dam Road near Milton. Uh, the following week, almost to the day, I got her again, um, once again speeding, and she uh, she tried to take off. Uh, I eventually she 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 tried to take off going towards uh, Valley View and she ended up crashing um, into into one of the street lamps uh, down there and she was uh, ultimately arrested for for her crime there. Um, coincidentally, this individual, her father was the one that caused the head-on collision and was uh, um, uh, died of his injuries last year. I don't know if anybody remembers that particular collision, but it's it's. It's co it's coincidental that this this uh, this young lady here obviously should have known better. Um, we did make a, a, a um, uh, what was that a social media post about this particular incident, uh, and we got some um, praises for the uh, for the arrest there. Um, the next thing was the sideshows. Um, sideshows. For us, it, it's tough for us to make enforcement on the sideshows. I know that it's, it's been an uh, ongoing issue, and we've talked about it in the past. Um, the hardship with those is because of the fluidity of the, of the, of the event and the sheer number of participants. It's, it's hard for us to uh, send the appropriate resources out there to, to, um, to make an effective uh, dispersal order or make the appropriate arrests. Um, a, a big... Help for us has been our air ops. The CHP air ops uh, has recently secured some funding for additional fuel, which allows them to do more patrols in the area. Um, that uh, has been, um, we've been able to make a couple of arrests based on the air ops being uh, um, in the area. Uh, and air ops, our air ops uh, has been very, uh, very proactive when it comes to those sideshows. Um, just recently, I believe it was two two weeks ago, uh, we made several arrests and impounded several vehicles uh, in relation to sideshows. And in fact, we also made an arrest um, with an individual that was trying to, um, I don't know, like like a 
kind of deter uh, the air op, the, uh, the police helicopter and airplane by shooting um, lasers at the uh, at the helicopter pilots and, and uh, airplane pilots. So that's we were able to catch that individual and also uh, make an arrest on that one. Uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about was stemming from the sideshows. We were able to um, impound a uh, a very well known YouTuber. Um, he's he's from the Martinez area, but he also frequents the um, the Pinole area, and he makes videos uh, of him performing his sideshow stunts uh, in in um, West Contra Costa County, primarily in the uh, Alhambra Valley area, but sometimes up and down Castro uh, Castro Ranch um, area. We were able to pin him down and impound his vehicle. We weren't uh, one of our officers uh, uh, wrote a warrant and went down to his house and impounded his vehicle for 30 days. Uh, so we were we were able to catch him and hopefully make an uh, make a an impact. Uh, with him and his his his, his followers, know, letting them know that you know we're following their their uh, YouTube channels because they're using the the YouTube as a platform to kind of um, um, glorify what it is that they're doing out there with these sideshows, and hopefully this um, this impounding his vehicle lets them know that hey, we're on to them and we're we're following their their YouTube channels, they uh, and and seeing what it is that they're doing and and going after them so. They know that we're not just, you know, letting them go and letting them get away with these things. Uh, is there any questions for me? Anything that uh, I should be made known of, uh, let me know about? Maybe I can, uh, if there's a particular problem area that I can uh, um, do some enforcement, other than obviously Dam Road. I'm, I'm well aware of the speed on Dam Road. Okay. Question from the board. Oh. Okay, uh, Will, you had a question? You got a question, yeah. Will? Yeah, I had a. Let me see. Melinda, I'm not muted. Okay. Question. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, a while back, along the dam road near uh, Castor Ranch, people started coming with uh, camper vans and trailers, just a few, and eventually went away. And we've had another, a, a long-term guy camping on uh, Castor Ranch right off of the dam road. Uh, the camper van's still there. And then just a week ago, I don't know if anyone else noticed, there was a huge camper van in the parking area right at the corner. I think it's a commuter park, huge one. And you can see he kind of set up camp and then he disappeared over the weekend. Um, my concern in general is I, I'm hoping the area never turns into something like what you see in Berkeley and Oakland, and, you know, Albany and around. So the idea is to be a little proactive. And I'm also, I've heard that Richmond was trying to set up a safe camp, a uh, parking area somewhere. And I don't know if anyone else, and I, mean, I don't know what the options are, but I'm also wondering, do you know anything about that camper that came and went? And what do you guys, what is your attitude towards that, that issue? I, I, this is the first I'm hearing about that camper van. Um, I haven't seen it, but, but if, obviously I haven't been, um, that far down in in uh, several days, I, I will definitely keep a, keep an eye out for it. As far as the um, as far as the uh, we'll call them uh, campers, the camper vans, they they're they're obviously in a hard spot. We we got we get a number of those who you know unfortunately maybe have lost their home and they're just looking for a place to stay. Obviously, you know there's there's locations where they can do that and obviously locations where they can't. Um, the vehicle code allows people to park for 72 hours in a particular spot. Um, so technically, if they're if they're parked there for 72 hours and on the 72nd hour they move it a foot, I mean, in theory, that's there's there's nothing legally I can I can do about it, as long as they're legally parked. Now the parking lot I think you're referring to right there at the corner of Castro Ranch, I don't know for sure if that's county maintained or if that's private property Does, can anybody speak to that i'm not sure i'm not sure i think i heard at one point that it, it's not marked that way but i i thought it was like one of those commuter parking areas and i, I don't know if there are any signs like like there. a park and ride yeah yeah there are yeah, no I, signs on it i have been very curious about that parking lot for a long time so if somebody could figure that out i would love to know I know, I know there's several uh, residences there that uh, the only access to them is through that parking lot. So I'm, I, I was under the assumption that they might be, that lot might be private property, but I can't say for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, if it is, if it is um, um, 
county maintained property or state property. I, I would say it's not state property because it's not it's not marked. But if it is county maintained property, I'm sure I can um, maybe work together with the um, uh, the sheriff's department and their and their uh, parking enforcement and uh, go down there and make sure nobody's obviously camping over there because. If, if, if it's a if it's a uh, park and ride, they're technically not supposed to be there for more than 24 hours anyway. Or there's no overnight parking, excuse me. Right. Uh, in, in well, park there's and no ride. signage. There's no signage for Macy Transit or anybody else, which is why I okay. don't really think it's a park and ride. I think it's a casual park and park and ride, but I don't think it's an official park and ride. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll I can I can see if I can uh, make contact with the uh, sheriff's department uh, parking enforcement guys, and maybe they might have some some additional information. Um, but I'll definitely look into that and find out who's responsible for that parking right parking or that excuse me that parking lot, um, yeah. and then um, and then obviously pay more attention to those those camper vans. I was I was not aware um, of of those vehicles being there for an extended period of time. So I'll I'll keep an eye out and then I'll re report back with whatever I find. Well, thank you very much, Officer Laviste. And if we have any Thanks. further questions, Linda, uh, looks like we have a good plan for the uh, parking lot being used by the RVs. And further questions, uh, Melinda? Oh, Officer Leviste, I just, I want to really thank you for um, doing something about the shot, uh, side shows, uh, because Will, you and I are obviously neighbors, because um, uh, on Castro Ranch, right at the entrance to Sherwood Forest, we're having three, four times a week. No. And they're not the big side shows, but they, they happen a lot. And sometimes they come into the neighborhood and do it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's um, you, I, you know, I, I really, I re oh yeah, you can see that, you can see where they've been. Um, but it's kind of terrifying. We have a lot of children and animals and everything else in the neighborhood. And so especially when they get off of Castro Ranch and they get into the neighborhood, it's just, you know, it's a safety problem. And so thank you for doing what you can. I get it that it's really hard. Um, and they, they come, uh, at least in our case, they come, they're there less time than I can find my phone and call you. I mean, it's quick. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, whatever you can do, I just wanted to thank you for that. And um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You're you're very welcome. And we're we're very well aware of the, the problem. And it's not it's not just your neighborhood. It's not just uh, El Sobrante. It's 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 everywhere as a whole. And and these people know that they've got the, that that mob mentality. They know that you know there'll be there'll be ten, twenty, maybe even fifty, a hundred of them. And we'll maybe catch one or two. So they know that their their chances of getting away are very high. Um, but like, like I said, we are starting to make some progress there with the, with the um, added funds that our air ops, uh, um, helicopters and airplanes have gotten. So they, now we have more fuel, so they can be up more. Uh, and, and, you know, hopefully, um, you know, th th these individuals will, will f learn that this is, this is uh, well, keep it on the racetrack, not, not, up, not out there on the public roads. Well, Thank, you know, the so. only other thing I just wanted to throw in there is that I think um, the social media monitoring could be really critical because if they don't have an audience for this, that would decrease some of the bang they get out of it. But they're gonna, so, their audience is tremendous. We're, we're, well, I'm, I know. I'm, but I'm, just, I'm saying just saying there are ways gonna, that we you, could, if, I mean, it sounds like you successfully managed to get a warrant for one of them. Um, if there are ways in which we could help with social media monitoring, that's maybe a way that citizens could help. No, the, the, I mean everything. Every what everybody's been doing is great. When 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 it's happening, letting us know. Granted, uh, Sherwood Forest is a little remote for us, so that it takes a, some time for us to get out there. Um, Unless you just to, happen to be coming down the damn road, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, but again, just let just give, just calling us. Even even if we're not able to get out there in time, at least we can show a pattern of when and where they are going. Oh, so you, that we'll, you can see you can see the tire tracks. Oh yeah, I, I oh I know I know. Um, so, yeah, just continue, just for the people to continue to keep calling in if when uh, these these uh, sideshows are occurring, so that way even if we're not able to respond, we can we can um, create a database and, and and track when and where these these uh, these sideshows are happening. Okay. Officer thank Labiche, you, they thank you so much for a really helpful and comprehensive report, and uh, we know that uh, uh, Battalion Chief Thomas. 
is ready to go ahead with uh, his presentation. So, Tom, um, Tom, I have one question. Officer okay. Levinsky, um, do you know the YouTuber's name or their handle? Yes, I do. <laughs> I have it right here. He refers to himself as, uh, let, me, let me spell it phonetically. It's uh, Henry Edward Lincoln Lincoln Ocean Ocean Ida Mary John Edward Nora Sam Edward Nora. That spells out, spells out hello, I'm Jensen. Um, was and he's, 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 what was the car I'm that sorry? was in, what was the make and model of the car that was impounded? He's got a a, a, a dark green uh, Challenger Hellcat, a very powerful muscle car. Okay. He uh, I it's not, I was just on his um, YouTube channel earlier this uh, this afternoon, and it looks like he just got the car back. So we're gonna be we're gonna be looking for him uh, to be out and about again, and hopefully get his car again if he continues his uh, his um, activities. I don't think, and I didn't mean to extend that. How much we're changing cost, out how much it cost for thirty Renault days in the impound? How much does that run someone thirty days in the impound? Oh, I'm, it's, a, it's a, approximately three thousand okay. dollars. Now, here's the funny here's the funny thing about that. His YouTube channel, he he reached out to his YouTube followers and asked for donations to pay for his impound fees. Oh, I bet you he believe got that. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you thank you for answering those questions appreciate it yeah yeah okay well thank you again officer Leviste. and see if maybe you can next time you impound his car you can change out his uh engine for like a renault smart car or something <laughs> see how he does so i think we can move next to uh battalion chief thomas to present on contra costa fire activities yes uh good afternoon uh, can everybody hear me okay? Sir. Okay. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, I hope everybody is staying safe. I have a lot of information. Your fire district is busy, but I'll try and keep it to under two minutes. Um, this is uh, the report from Chief Burchard. Um, rescue typing. Our rescue program achieved another milestone in November by receiving type two certification from the governor's office of emergency services for both Rescue 10 in Concord and Rescue 82 in Antioch. Previously, our rescues were not typed according to state standards. In order to achieve a type certification, an agency must demonstrate it possesses the appropriate equipment and apparatus, proper training facilities, and, and it goes on and on. So this is a huge milestone for your fire district that has uh, uh, obtained this type two certification. Uh, fire season update. In 2020, fire season proved to be a challenging one here in Contra Costa County and across the western U.S. While we fared better than many of our neighbors, we did respond to more than 400 grass and vegetation fires countywide, managing to hold all but a handful of them to less than 10 acres. This was a considerable feat given the weather, fuel conditions, and came as a result of significant planning and preparedness. And I, I think I spoke before about crew 12 and positioning crews before the um, red flag warning days actually came, we put crews in place and, and it actually worked out really good. In recognition, in recognition of the changing nature of our fire seasons, we are no longer declaring an official end to the season as we have done in the past years. As it currently stands across the district, there are considerable dead annual grasses, dry brush and vegetation that all have very low fuel moisture and thereby present an ongoing fire, wildfire risk. In spite of the lower temperatures and some rain, the danger of wildfires still remains a threat. And just two days ago when I was on duty, we were in red flag warning um, across the county. However, with the seasonal adjustment and responses, we have been able to demobilize Crew 12 and our dozer program for the oncoming un months. Both Crew 12 and our dozers proved invaluable during the height of the 2020 fire season and played important roles in keeping our community safe. We are examining lessons learned from this season 
for each of these programs and we'll be making adjustments to staffing for 2021 to maximize the value of both programs. Fire district consolidation study. Uh, as you know, we're trying to study uh, consolidating East Contra Costa into Contra Costa Fire and we're looking at Rodale Hercules as coming, uh, becoming part of Contra Costa Fire. Uh, Fire District Consolidation Study, phase one of this initiative, a financial feasibility study of East Contra Costa County Fire Protection District was completed last month. Based on phase one study results, we plan to move forward into the plan phase two of the study, which will examine the two potential annexations in great detail. We expect results of phase two to be available for decision making in mid 2021. Okay, REACH partnership, that's the helicopter that we partnered with. with. In late October, our Con Air crews were able to take advantage of the presence of CAL FIRE aircraft and crews to coordinate operational and airspace issues directly between air crews. This will contribute contribute to better and more cohesive joint firefighting efforts. Con Air One begins hoisting training this month. When completed in spring of 2021, this important new capability will be available to support our communities and the surrounding region. And what hoisting is, is when you have a patient, say a hiker has fallen on a trail on Mount Diablo, ground crews go in, to get to the patient, but you can also have the helicopter come in and while the ground crews will package up the patient, put them on a backboard, stiff neck, assess their vitals, the whole deal, the helicopter can lower a hoisting cable, lift them out of the canyon or the mountain and deliver them down to a waiting ambulance. Saves a lot of time, effort, um, and it's, more, it's safer than crews trying to bring them back down in the ambulance which may not be four wheel drive. Okay, USCG housing in Concord. That's the United States Coast Guard housing in Concord. Our efforts to obtain better security for this nuisance property that has resulted in firefighter injuries due to multiple, multiple homeless cause structure fires and wildland fires have not borne fruit. Multiple inquiries with the U.S. Coast Guard have been met with, we are doing all we can and it's out of our control. The Office of Congressman Mark DeSaulnier has been engaged to support our re request. However, the property is now up for auction. And when a sale goes through and the property is subject to local regulation, we will immediately pursue implementation of adequate security with the new owner. Okay, so that's the ongoing thing in Concord. COVID-19 update, update. In late November, noting upticks in both exposures and infections, we redoubled our efforts to educate personnel and enforce protection policies. We continue to closely monitor pandemic developments locally, nationwide, and around the world. It is clear there is need for continued vigilance in order to adjust protection and operational measures based on any changes. In the meantime, we have reviewed contingency plans to ensure we are prepared um, should the current surge in local cases impact our operations. And we, we had a number of firefighters um, with surrounding districts test positive and we've been in close proximity on structure fires, garage fires. We've making sure that our personnel are wearing masks and, um, and reporting any type of contact that has, that has occurred. So we're, we're, we're staying on this. Things are still happening, but we're letting you know, letting you know we're staying on this. Uh, 5150 coordination efforts, um, that's just, public health and us monitoring some of the mental health issues that are coming up in our district. Uh, support services, the first 20 CONFIRE owned ambulances, which will replace the current AMR provided vehicles 
early next year have been delivered. We will be placing an order for another 20 to be delivered in 2021. Okay. Arson arrests, con fire investigators working with San Pablo Police Department arrested 30 year old Jeremy Ong, O N G, a San Pablo resident who is suspect is a suspect in a series of five fires set in and around San Pablo on November 6, 2020. Ong was charged with arson of a structure or forest land. The first fire involved a homeless encampment behind Inspalio Court. Soon after arrival on scene, two additional fires were reported. Upon investigation, the, fire, the third fire was determined to have been set by Ong, who was later arrested. Okay, so that's your investigators hard at work. I'm almost done. EMS, call volume remains below historic levels and we have not yet, as of late November, experienced the typical flu season uptick in calls, but we're monitoring it. EMS division implemented a series of district-wide flu immunization clinics in, in November to maximize availability and protection for all employees. This clinic structure may serve as a model for possible COVID-19 vaccine distribution to district personnel. So they're looking to make sure that it's available and, and studying that as we go. Uh, training. The training division leveraged the district's Google-based Google -based tailboard intranet site last month to move its extensive training management process to the digital environment. The move promises greater levels of efficiency and effectiveness, making modernized tools and processes, including our master training calendar, a new online workflow approval process, a policy and procedures library with involved access and search features and new daily operational snapshots, tailboards available to all employees on any device. So before we'd have to be on a district laptop or your district cell phone to access your district email or your training calendar and things like that. Now with this Google process, you can have it on your personal phone, access your email or your training schedule from home or any device. So it's, it's a big plus, but, and they're also trying to make sure that all the information, all the different places, you know, we have a daily check for our COVID, our temperature check. Now, instead of having to be at work to check your temperature and report it, you can do it from your personal device. So they're trying to make it all a one-stop shop on the Google Sheets, which is really big. We are hosting a Mastering the Unified Command course for the first responder agencies across the region. The course was taught in a newly modified hybrid in-person and remote classroom designed and constructed to safely conduct training in the pandemic environment. It allows sharing of training simultaneously in multiple classrooms and online and to accommodate distancing requirements. A new state-of-the-art forcible entry training prop was installed at Fire Station 84, which is in Pittsburgh, last month, making it possible for crews to conduct this important and re recurring training without leaving the very busy Pittsburgh Antioch area. And then last thing, uh, fire prevention. Colder weather has prompted many businesses across the county to seek approval to use heaters to make outdoor spaces commercially viable. To help facilitate these approvals with a minimum of confusion, Con Fire, Fire Prevention Bureau coordinated an initiative of Contra Costa County Fire Marshals to develop a common set of standards for temporary tent applications for businesses seeking to expand outdoor operations, and this may or may not be shut down. The resulting standard provides a unified approach to ensure consistency across all fire agencies in the county. Additionally, we are working with county health to provide businesses accurate and coordinated information related to compliance with health orders based on the current, on their current tier system. So, Two district inspectors were promoted to fire inspector two in November, Teresa Castle and Jim Fellum, 
The Fire Prevention Bureau also conducted interviews for the remaining Fire Inspector 1 and Fire Inspector 2 vacancies. And last, Communications Chief Recruitment. We are continuing to the recruitment process to fill this vacancy, having interviewed six highly qualified candidates for a field of, from a field of 18. Final interviews will, were scheduled for the week of November 30th, and we hope to make an announcement around the end of the year. And that's the end of the report. Um, I just wanna say uh, also just two days ago on my uh, last shift, your fire station 69 responded to a structure fire. You may have seen it on the news in Richmond and it was an abandoned boarded up house, but one of the homeless personnel was able to get in there and was setting up residence. We had smoke and flames showing from the house. The crews made a, a, a aggressive initial attack on the fire. Uh, in the process of attacking the fire, they came across an individual inside. They said, Chief, we have a rescue. They pulled the victim out. It was uh, pulseless, non-breathing. They started CPR right there on the lawn and regained a pulse. He was transferred to Richmond Kaiser, who transferred or flew them to UC Davis. I don't know if it's because of smoke inhalation or the burn, but uh, ended up passing away there. But your crews did an excellent job, and I just, I'm just i very proud of them. And that's the end of my report. So thank you very much, uh, Chief Thomas. That was an excellent comprehensive report. So um, I'd like to open up questions to the board. I'd just like to ask you, um, do you have an anticipated date when uh, your personnel will start to get vaccinations for COVID? Um, an anticipated date for vaccinations? Yeah, what, what no. you want, will they get start getting it in December, January? Do we know yet? I think no. that should be that should be probably really high priority. Yes, as we're considered uh, first responders and essential employees, um, I think we're in that list of uh, first personnel to receive it. But as a, a date, I have not spoken with Chief Bouchard yet, um, but they are they are in conversation about that already. Yes, great. I will. So, thank you, sir. Questions from the board. If there are no questions from the board, we can go to the audience. Uh, any questions for Chief Thomas? Uh, Will? Yeah, hi. Um, as probably you know, the city of Richmond's floated the idea of cutting back on their fire department uh, personnel and doing what they call a rolling brownout, shutting down stations a couple days at a time. That's a real concern for us out here because we don't have very good coverage to begin with. But my question for you is, are they floating any ideas like that in the county, cutbacks of any kind to fire service? Because, no, you know, it's a big financial problem. Yes. They're looking for places to cut now. Yes, no, that's a very good question. And that's uh, one of our concerns as well. But no, the county, Contra Costa wow. County Fire is not looking at doing any brownouts or cutting back on any personnel. We're actually looking to uh, continue our list of hiring and interviewing for hire. But um, we are watching and monitoring and in constant communications with Richmond ab about um, them possibly browning out their, their truck companies. Mm -hmm. um, and their thought is if they don't have enough personnel, not just closing down the company, but um, not having, say, six personnel in that truck company, but three personnel. Mm -hmm. So instead of three personnel on the engine, three personnel on the truck to respond to all the calls, they may have just three personnel and the three personnel will respond on the engine. If it's a truck call, then they'll move all their equipment over to the truck. The problem with that is if they're on the engine and they go on a call, then there's nobody to man that truck. And that's what the brownout means. But um, no, the county is not, Contra Costa County Fire is not planning on browning out any equipment and we're well staffed. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other questions for Chief Thomas? Gene? Uh, yes, Gene. Thanks very much. Um, so related to Will's question, I belong to a community group that we call the 94803 um, Emergency Preparedness Alignment, uh, Alliance, which looks at both 
everything in 94803. Some of it's Richmond, some of it's Contra Costa, um, but a lot of it's next door to each other. It's kind of like a spider web. Um, and we've related to the, the, um, the proposed budget changes in Richmond, we've been trying to figure out if it's possible to look at the 2021 budget, fire budget, and compare it to 2020 actual as far as you have it and then budget. Is it possible for residents to do that? And who would we ask? Is it possible for residents to compare the to, budgets from year to year? To look at the budgets, yep. I believe it is. Um, I, 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 that who would is we ask? Quite above my <laughs> level. That's more for Chief Burchard, but okay. uh, and, and County Council and City, uh, uh, um, well, you have a new administrator now. It's no longer David Twa, so uh, I, I believe it's for her. But uh, I believe those, um, once they're finalized, I believe they do become public information. Gene, that's, that's normally on their website. Gene, I think you can get that if you email Steve Hill. Um, many times the public information officers with agencies will facilitate questions like that. Um, Thank you. Yeah, but email, and then I have one of I other you, comment. I can give you Steve's email. Just shoot me an email, Gene. Um, if I okay, guarantee I'll do that. You, I Thank will you. forget. <laughs> Thanks, James. Um, one other question for um, uh, for you, uh, Cap Captain Thomas. Um, so I was glad to hear you talk about the red flag days that we had just a couple days ago. One of the other things that our group has been trying to do is to get some red flags. And we've been trying for a couple of months. We know that some were allocated to the Contra Costa County Fire Protection District. Um, and they seem to have gone to places that have fire departments of their own, but there are none in zip code 94803. And we would love to have some to, um, to raise awareness of high fire danger when it comes, especially since El Sobrani is mostly a very high fire severity um, hazard zone. So, so Halen, Do you know how to get contact those? with Chief, Chief Burchard. So, Gene, the best person to ask might be Sohaila to see where she is. I've with, talked to Sohaila. Oh, well, so she reached out to, I don't know how else to say, but Chief Thomas's uh, boss, Chief Burchard, who was on last month with that request. And he's following, Chief Burchard is following up on, on that. So but that, we still don't have any. So we right. had another so red flag day. Chief Thomas is not the right person. Chief Burchard is. You have to go to the fire chief to get flags that were donated by the Diablo Valley Fire Safe Council? I don't recall. If he that. has them, yes. That so that's where they come here. from. They were donated. The, the fire district just didn't happen to um, distribute any to 94803. Neither did Richmond Fire, mind you. So I, I have a question and a suggestion here regarding that. Do you think it would be possible, I mean, would it be legal, for example, to purchase some red flags from Amazon and put them up? I mean, I don't know if that's outside of county compliance. I've already asked that question. Um, and the answer was that, because I figured if at the very least, we could go to the Richmond City Council and you guys and say, will you pitch in some money for red flags? They're pretty generic, um, but they said no. The other right. thing they said was that the only place they were allowed to be posted was at a fire station. And we came back with, that's too bad. Those people already know when there's a red flag day. And so we proposed being able to put them on um, state property. So maybe a library, maybe a school, maybe a whatever, where we could actually have a person assigned so, to put them out, take them in. Okay. So I, I think that, you know, we have the situation where, this is now being discussed with Chief Burchard. Um, I'm not sure that Chief Thomas could shed any further light on this. So I think it would be a good idea to go to the next topic if anybody has any questions for Chief Thomas. If there are no further questions for Chief Thomas, uh, I'd like to thank you so much for coming in and making your presentation to us. We really, oh, it looks like Melinda has a question. Go ahead, Melinda. Oh, okay, this is, this is the thank you. <laughs> All right, so just uh, wanted to thank you for your presentation and for coming in and spending time with us. We really appreciate the information. Thank all of you, and please be safe out there. Um, 
take this COVID thing serious. And I really appreciate you having me. Thank you. Okay, thank you again. Thank you. So our next presentation is by Ormondo Hodge, who's a, an engineer with the West County Wastewater District, and he's talking about a new project in El Sobrante. Uh, Mr. Hodge. Good, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Armando, and I'm an engineer with the West County Wastewater. So what I'll be doing right now is I'll share my screen so that I can give the PowerPoint presentation. Can everybody see my screen? Okay, great, great. So this is an update on the various lift station upgrades project, which includes Sobrante Lift Station located at 5493 Sobrante Avenue in El Sobrante. We're estimating that the construction will take approximately four months, starting in February of next year, ending in June of next year. This is an important project as it will allow us to increase our ability to service the community and provide power reliability to the equipment. This includes a generator installation, as well as new pumps and mechanical piping. We are in the process of acquiring additional land through the easement acquisition process. And we're hoping to send that paperwork to the property owner by the end of the week. Uh, legal counsel has reviewed it, and now the supervisor is taking a look at it as well. So I just want to go over the steps with you. Uh, property owner correspondence is always ongoing, as you guys know. Um, engagement with the community is very important. Uh, we will be obtaining the property owner signatures by the end of the month. After that, I will prepare a staff report for West County Wastewater's Board of Directors to review and approve the land acquisition next month. And then we plan to begin the construction in February. So here's kind of a, here's a picture of the primary sheet of plant of the plan set for Zabrante. Um, as you can see over here, this will be the standby generator. Um, the for, uh, for lack of a better term, the wastewater flow will come in from up here and it'll go through the system and be pushed out through the force main, pressurized sewer main, coming out this way um, towards the street. It'll be going out towards Sobrante Avenue, which is approximately 700 feet away from the lift station. So it's quite a bit off of the street, um, accessible through a very lengthy driveway. Um, the purpose of the standby generator is to provide power in the case of a power outage, and we will be doing preventative maintenance to make sure that it's operational when necessary. Uh, here's, a, here's a picture of it. Just wanted to kind of show you what it looks like. This is a trailer mounted version. What we'll be installing will be a skid mounted version, which is, which is stationary. It'll be located on top of a concrete pad. And that's actually all for the presentation. Want to make it very brief and be respectful of the time limit set by the organization. At the time, at this time, I'll be available for any questions if you have any for me. Hey, Armando, this is James. Uh, do you have an address? I, many of us know where Sobrante Avenue is, but do do you have an address for where um, this this generator will go? Yes, yes, five four nine three Sobrante Avenue. Okay. What cross street is that near? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and if you, if you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and open up this, uh, Google earth really quickly and then get that answer for you. So, um, can you guys still see the screen here or is the, did the screen share go away? Okay. So this is the location here. This is Sobrante Avenue. Um, I think I'm gonna have to scroll over this way to try to find the a nearer cross street. So it's off about, it's quite a ways up there. Right, it's approximately 700 feet away from, from Sobrante Avenue, quite a bit off of the street down this lengthy driveway here. So everyone that knows where Four Corners is or where the Somewhere Else Sports Bar, it's it's left, way it's way up the hill. Make a left it's or a right the and, then you go, and then you go quite a bit quite a ways up the hill there. Thanks, James. I wasn't sure where the cross street was, so thanks for adding that in there. There, there really isn't a cross street there. <laughs> <laughs> it's back up the hill. 
<laughs> Thank you. As someone who has a property at 6100, I mean at 5166, I was very interested, but it's obviously up the hill from us. <laughs> so thank you very much, Armando, for the presentation. Are there any questions from the board regarding the uh, wastewater project? Okay, if I don't see any hands raised from the board, um, do we have uh, any questions from the audience about this project? Okay, in that case, I'd like to thank Armando for coming in and presenting this important project to us. It's uh, nice to know that um, you know our wastewater handling capability is being increased even in these hard times. So uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Armando. Thank you, everybody. Okay, so. Uh, at this point, we move into discussion items regarding development plan applications, variance reports, et cetera. As I understand it from the agenda, there are uh, no such discussion items uh, this month, correct, James? That is correct, I haven't received it. All right, so we can move into the next item on our agenda, which is the um, public comment section. So. If you have an item of general interest that hasn't been uh, discussed in the agenda, uh, you have sort of two minutes to present your discussion item. So do we have any takers for um, public comment, two minute comments? Will you mute first? Yeah, I, I, I'd like to briefly make a comment related to what I was talking about earlier. So I actually, the area I live in is right off Castro Ranch. It's the city of Richmond, but it's way out in El Sobrani. And a lot of people here are concerned about the proposal in Richmond to cut back on uh, fire department coverage. We already have pretty minimal, uh, when, you, when you look at how many fire stations are within our area and within reach, very few compared to for example, Point Richmond, which is another high fire uh, risk area. So we're going to be talking to the city a lot about, you know, they're talking about across the board cuts through the whole city uh, for coverage. And our feeling is, well, maybe you should look at what the existing coverage is. And if an area is already underserved, you might want to consider leaving us out. So I was happy to hear what the uh, county said, but uh, so it's kind of a Richmond issue, but if you're anybody who's living Sherwood Forest or a lot of parts of Elsperini, I think it's a concern. We're going to try to point that out to Richmond. That's all. I just wanted to bring that up. Thank you, Will. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Will. So, uh, Chris, just Melinda, are you raising your hand? Melinda, uh, Melinda go ahead. Um, I just, in response to what Will said. Um, I, I think it might be appropriate for this body to send a letter to the city of Richmond about this particular concern, um, just to add, you know, I mean, obviously individually we can all say what we say, but I, I think um, that the, these cuts um, could disproportionately affect our general community severely. And um, so I personally would love for us to send one of our famous letters that we're not sure they do any good, but we at least send them. <laughs> so if other, if other board members uh, join me in that, um, I would really love for us to send an official letter to the city of Richmond saying that we're very concerned that we will be disproportionately affected by fire cuts. Could, could, I, just, could I just add, uh, I really appreciate that. And I'm wondering, I've actually made a map kind of showing where the fire stations are and the distances from where I am, which is Greenbrier, which is right by Castro Ranch. And like we have two stations within four miles and Point Richmond has eight. Uh, Carriage Hills, if you're familiar with them, they have one station within four miles. And that's the one they're talking about browning out. So 
could I send that to James and maybe you could pass that on? If people would, are interested in looking at the map? Yeah, I, I mean, I've seen all this material because I have two am in that 94803 group and I've seen all that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Although maybe, um, I don't know that I've seen exactly your stuff, Will, but I've seen a lot of different analysis and I, I would be hesitant to try to be proscriptive around that, um, but mostly just um, ask that we be included um, as the uh, MAC in their communication and that we also um, are concerned about disproportionate. I don't think we have to make the case in our letter okay. as one governmental entity to another, but I think we ought to tell them we're paying attention. Okay. So, so Melinda, if you want to say, to me, Melinda, if you want to take a first stab at that letter, I would be happy to read it if you wanted to send it to me and make comments. Sure. And you know what I would really love is, um, Will, it sounds like you've done a lot of work on this and maybe you and I could trade some information and maybe you and I could work on it together. Sure. And then sounds like uh, Thomas would be um, willing to sign it and send it on behalf of the MAC. But I think what's probably in order is you probably need to ask all the MAC members to be okay with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we, we have a way of working through James to send it around and make sure everybody gets their two cents in. And Will, can yeah, you? No, but I mean, right now. I mean, we need to vote to send a letter. <laughs> you can't. You there? You can't take a vote. It's not on the agenda. You guys can agree to do it, and if someone drafts it, we can put it on for next month. Got it. And Will, okay, please good. send me. Please send me the information, Will, that you were talking yeah. about. Map. I'd like to see it. And uh, I have a a draft of something we're sending to the mayor and the council members. How about good, I? Good. I'd send love you to that. see that. Then that's when I'll send that to to Melinda. And okay. The other. Okay. Well, perfect. Thank, thank you. So that was an important uh, discussion item. Yeah, thank you. Uh, do we have any further discussion items? Melinda. I just wanted to ask, and Mickey and Chris can get in on this, um, the dumping, the dumping, the dumping, illegal dumping, the dumping. So what I was thinking, Melinda, is we could add that to the information items and subcommittee reports, so that way we're not limited to two okay. minutes. Okay, sorry, uh, I'm out of order then. Never mind, go right. ahead. So are there any additional sort of two minute comments uh, for public comment? So if there are no additional two minute public comments, what I suggest is we sort of combine the uh, information item and subcommittee report so that we can hear about uh, the illegal dumping subcommittee and the efforts going on in that area. So Mickey and Chris could perhaps talk about that. Great. Sorry, everybody, that my internet has been so unstable that I've been in and out of this meeting all night. Hopefully it'll stay for, for me to say what I want to say. For one thing, um, we're trying to get a meeting together. And I don't know if we settled on a date, did we? Do you know if we did, James? We didn't set a time, but the 12th, James. The 12th? Okay, so. We can do it right now, 6.30, 7, 6. You let me know what time you. Okay, we can, so I just, mostly I wanted to know the date. So, um, okay, very good. So, uh, I'm looking forward to getting uh, more involved with that committee next year because we now have a, a new group on next door that I'm very excited about. And uh, it's called, right now it's called the El Bronte Richmond Neighborhood Cleanup. And we had our first group cleanup and with the help of Ken from uh, the green team who came with all his equipment. So last Saturday, we concentrated on that area at San Pablo Dam Road and Castro Ranch Road. And if, you, if you've been driving by there, you probably saw big bags and tires and TVs and all kinds of things. That was what our group had collected on Saturday and maybe a couple days since. But we had about a good, maybe 15 to 20 volunteers come. And now we've found that we have a very motivated uh, group in, in El Sobrante, which makes me very happy. And it, the name's probably going to change maybe to Greater 
El, El Sobrante neighborhood cleanup. But if you go to next door, you could sign up and find out about uh, what our latest efforts are. And our plan is to go maybe once a, once a month for a big group cleanup and uh, pick out an area. Uh, last time we went from Castro Ranch and San Pablo Dam Road up to Lake Ridge and down San Pablo Dam Road and some on Castro Ranch and Make you froze. Uh oh. Chris? Still talking, yeah. Um, Mickey, you're frozen. They missed all that last stuff. Okay, I'm going to go to I think she's going to come in by my computer to uh, continue that report. I was going to say, we can sort of hear her <laughs> by your computer. <laughs> all right. Then when you come into Chris's office here, that's a little more stable. Just where, did, where did I leave off? Uh, you were talking about doing monthly... Yeah, so our goal is once a month to be able to uh, have a, the group come together, but possibly have little mini uh, cleanups in between just for an hour. It was so gratifying to see the difference that we made in that one day. And I'm so happy to see that so many people are, are real motivated to just take it upon themselves. Chris and I, the next day, you know, we, we couldn't stand our corner, which is near La Honda and, and San Pablo Dam Road. And we just, you know, piled up more stuff and called Lynn from the county public works, who is very receptive and ready to like, you know, add it to the list. And it was, everything was picked up today, I think. I didn't, I saw that our local one was, but I don't know if the one um, Castro Ranch, and is that still there? It's gone? Good, good. So, so um, we're going to consider maybe down the road doing an adopt a road uh, application so that we can have more access to the equipment and everything. But so far that the green team working with them has been like incredible and very exciting and Ken is like seems to really know what he's doing and has the equipment. He has like 20 grabbers and vests and bags and gloves and all kinds of stuff. So it made it really easy. So I'm, I'm very excited that we have a motivated community to take this on in a, in a regular way, I hope. But right now we have, even on next door, we have 33 members. So that was a good start, you know, for that group. And uh, did you want to say something? Yeah, I would just say that I think we pulled together something like 20 cubic yards of trash out that one area, and then maybe uh, two cubic yards over uh, at the second place. But it, it really, I think, shows this whole link between the littering and the uh, dumping issues because we were looking, we we're going to pick up litter, but there's a couple of items that we saw. And then the next thing you know, we're looking down the hill and there's big stuff. So we kept pulling out bigger and bigger stuff, but had been dumped over the years that were like starting to get out of there. So um, I, don't, I don't know how, how Lynn felt about how much stuff we were pulling out. But one of the mm -hmm. things we noticed is you can really get a lot of big things as well as small things. We were picking up uh, widescreen TVs. I mean, yeah, it was. was. Yeah. And regular cathode ray TVs and all the, all the stuff that was just, uh, you know, we originally thought we were just mostly getting litter, but uh, you can see the nexus. But it's pretty unbelievable how much crap there is all over the, all over the street, the wrappers, the fast food, and how quickly it comes back. So overall, and I, I, I guess we'll take this on in more depth, hopefully, with our uh, committee meeting on the 12th about... Um, you know, other steps we can do. I think it really requires a good public education campaign to get people much more knowledgeable. And uh, I, and I'd like to see it starting with the kids. I mean, in, in curriculum in the schools. I don't know if they're doing that anymore, but you know, we see kids throwing things around. So I don't know if they're developing a consciousness, but we need to to raise the consciousness in, in El Sobrante. And, you know, like there's so many areas we could be hitting up 
down Appian Way, Valley View. I'd like to get our group over by the uh, that field near the 80 free, freeway off of San Pablo down road that's getting more and more disgusting. And around the block from us, there's apartments. So I'm thinking that maybe ultimately we'll have an opportunity to like somehow or another contact the managers of these apartment buildings, see if they could take a more active role in keeping their areas clean just in front of their apartments would be very helpful and make a big difference. But I, I guess that's more for another meeting, but... Um, I think one other thing worth mentioning though is that what we did uh, in regard to the COVID situation was that we had uh, people, we just broke up and people went in different places and different uh, areas away from each other so that people didn't have to work close to each other. Um, and the other concern I have is about, uh, not with this, but in some areas there's like brush that makes it so where people can't walk without going out in the street. And so um, maybe James can answer this. There's no problem with just taking a little clipper and clipping off stuff that makes it where people can't go out in the street when you're going uh, walking around the road, is there? I'm not gonna run afoul of some uh, ordinance <laughs> by. <laughs> so here's what I'll say because we're recording the meeting. Um, call me tomorrow when we're not, no. Um, so <laughs> you wanna be mindful of who, of who, who the property belongs to. So many folks are right, right. not going to be bothered if you trim their hedges back a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. But with that said, I would not do it without checking with the property owner. Um, and that's just a, uh, you know, some folks may not be bothered by it. It's probably illegal mm -hmm. to do it on someone else's property. So be mindful, but I, I would definitely ask first, I think, you know, you're headed in the, in the right direction. Uh, okay. But I would definitely ask the property owner before doing anything like that. Okay. Yeah, this looks like it's just, uh, I mean, this is just like a bush hanging out in the street. But um, okay. It, I mean, it's like it's not a, an apparent property owner. It just looks now, like now send it to me. Now, if you have a picture that you can send to me, okay. I can find out exactly right. where you're in and who it. Okay. Yeah. All, I'm also uh, not talking about anything drastic. I'm talking about, you know, just clipping some other stuff. But anyway, thank you. So the, this, uh, my partner in this, uh, we met this guy who started the next door group, Adrian Lembert, who's, uh, I'm, I'm very happy to have met. Um, he was wondering if, if at all we could get any help with like, if we do need to be in the street, like on San Pablo Dam Road, now going, leaving, going towards Arinda, that's gotten really a lot of litter there, but it's not very safe to be, you know, having a lot of people on the road there picking it up. But we were wondering if there's some kind of police support we might be able to get or sheriff support or something that could block the roads or, or do something if we do take that on ultimately. Yes, Melinda? I think we're now doing the agenda for our meeting on the 12th. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. But I think I'll, these I'll are stop there. I'll stop there. I'm just very excited, and you know. No, 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 no. I think it's really, really great, and I'm so delighted that you all are did all of that. And I'm not a next door person, and I'm not adding any more social media to my life right now because <laughs> I have enough. Um, but I'm, uh, and I was so sorry I couldn't be with you on Saturday. But it's just magnificent what you're doing, and thank you. And I can't wait for the twelfth. So that yeah, we can keep and doing and we're, more. We're thinking that our next one will be maybe this, maybe we'll try to establish something like the second Saturday of the month or something like that. So, um, and we'll let you know. I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are there any uh, questions for Mickey and Chris, either from council members or the audience? So I just want to thank both of you for just, you know, volunteering for that and being the leaders. Um, it's a huge contribution to our community. I mean, no matter where you look, there is waste by the roadside and we have such a beautiful little town. I mean, it's just such a shame that, you know, this is there. So kudos to you guys for being the leaders on this. Thank you. Um, we're, we're just, I'm just happy to see so much interest in the community too. So um, 
It'll be a group effort. It takes a village right. to keep us clean. It does. <laughs> so um, announcements, James, any announcements? So I'm going to be sending out a follow-up email with some documents from Animal Services, the Sheriff's Report, PG&E sent out um, a notice that folks, uh, PG&E reminds customers of ongoing support available to help with COVID-19 pandemic impacts. I don't know if folks have seen that, so I'll send some of those things out tomorrow. Um, I did check, and I checked it while Officer LaVista was on, who owns that area. And an interesting thing happened in the county's mapping system. Uh, when I clicked on the space, nothing highlighted. So uh, I will check with our GIS folks to find out if that means what I believe it means. And that's, um, it might be county uh, responsibility. So typically in the mapping system, if that, if there's no parcel to highlight with information associated to it, sort of treated as open space. I suspect this, you know, 50-50 it might be the county. Um, but I will check with our GIS folks um, in addition to checking with planning because we should definitely find out who's there. Because if it does belong to the county, it's real easy to have public works, put no parking signs up there, um, no overnight parking, all that'll be really, really easy. Yeah. Um, and without ownership, it kind of does belong to the county, if you know what I mean. It, if there's no specific private property owner there, it's just a parking lot that someone built. It's not affiliated with the homes beyond there because I can click and see who owns those parcels adjacent to it. Um, so I've got a, a note. I'm taking notes this month instead of relying on the recording for my minutes. Okay. Uh, so I will check with GIS tomorrow and probably will have to check with planning as well. Um, Thank you. And okay. I, I wanted to apologize to Tim. Uh, I hadn't been including him in the MAC. When I send out our distribution, I send it to uh, Sergeant Pruitt and then their boss, Lieutenant Gregorian. And I didn't realize until tonight uh, while he was talking that I hadn't been sending him the, the, the agenda. So I wanted to apologize to him about that. I assumed that it was getting, you know, he was getting the information, but I've included him on our list and he's very responsive. He doesn't know, but I've seen him on the bike. He has definitely been out there quite a bit. Um, do email him or email me if you have questions or concerns, hot spots, places where speeding is going on, things of that nature. Um, feel free to send that to me. Um, but I don't want to str string this out any longer. That's that's pretty much all I've all I've got. Okay. So uh, agenda items, speakers for upcoming SMAC meetings. I was thinking well, James. Well, for next month from East Bay Mud. She couldn't make it this month. Um, so Charlotte okay. will be around uh, for the January meeting to give us an update from East Bay Mud. Um, are there other special districts? So East Bay Mud, West County Wastewater District. Those might be the only two special districts in West County, but um, if folks have, if there's someone that you'd like to come present at one of our meetings, just shoot me an email. I'm happy to reach out. It's not a guaranteed yes, but we can. I can guarantee we'll ask. Okay. Will, so James, I had a thought. Maybe will the bike advisory committee? Um, we've been emailing the gentleman yeah. that you sent to me, but we will have our first meeting taking a look at that on the 16th. So I guess a week from today. Whoa. And, um, so are you sending out something? Say it. You're sending out something? No, so this is the this is the small group of folks. Oh. This is just the advisory. This is only like six or seven people. But you sent me a name from a gentleman over at Greenbrier, I think. Um, I don't okay. think that he's replied, so I'll make sure to send the invite to you as well. There was significant interest from the community um, in having, uh, you've seen the signs that will cross over the road. Uh, there aren't many places along Dam Road to allow pedestrian to cross except for at many of our major streets right. so this will be taking a look at that while i can already anticipate and have heard from some people about you know them being upset uh, between you between the 15 of us i don't care we need to slow speed down on san pablo dam road and we need to have a safe place for people to be able to cross yeah. you've never driven up san pablo driven up and down san pablo dam road there are 
30 apartment complexes. Yeah. Um, people need to be able to get back and forth across the street. Not that I, well, yeah, I guess I don't care if someone's not in favor of it. We've, we've gotten a lot of interest. Um, something like 90 to 100 people replied to the survey that Public Works sent out. So that's, that's a lot of response if you, if you don't know. Um, yeah. I've been with John about 10 years and getting 90 to 100 people to come out for something that's not you know, on fire right in front of you is, is good community response. So there's you know, quite a bit of support, um, but we'll get the results from the study that was conducted by uh, private contractors that Public Works had come out and take a look at this whole road diet idea and we'll know more and then they will make a subsequent presentation to the MAC once we've had our first advisory group meeting and uh, get some direction for things like that. Now I'm done talking. Well, but oh, okay. Could I oh, ask go ahead, real Will. quick? Sure. Just, sure, go ahead. What happened about uh, bike lanes? Is that even a it's consideration? Be yeah, because so, I wrote that. Road will all be part, it's all looked at as part of what they're going to do. We'll find out all, all that next week. Yeah, because I wrote it recently and it's like, whew. It's a scary place to ride. It's dangerous. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, James, I was just thinking not necessarily for January, but perhaps for uh, February, like a county vaccine update and potential implications for things like first responders, the schools, uh, reopening of various facilities, et cetera. So, Supervisor uh, Julia is sending along with Supervisor Burgess, they um, I input it into the system, it'll go on next week's agenda, a resolution from the Board of Supervisors to the state requesting that teachers be among the first to receive vaccines, that there's a prioritization there. Um, so there, there are discussions ongoing about the vaccine and who will receive it first, uh, Tom, but that specifically for, for teachers, um, there are several other counties that have uh, submitted similar letters to the state well, so but just in general in the community, you know, distribution of COVID vaccines is absolutely, you know, it's a central thing to our future. So I think as soon as we can kind of get in information collected together so that we could have a presentation to the board and community. By February, you know, we've got something up there given to everybody. Um, then for sure, but right now we're sort of in a holding pattern on news related to the vaccine. Do we get something that they're going to start? But let's try and have something for at least February or March where we get like a summary of what's going on. There's no vaccine. There's no discussion to have. Right, but, but I'm saying for later. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not for not for January but perhaps for February or March. Yeah, yeah, when something becomes available, I feel like it'll be something that we all hear about at the same time, sort of. You know, our health services department will send a email out to everybody that's on their distribution list. If you're not on the health services distribution list, um, email me. It's, it's really good information that they share for more than just COVID, but if you want COVID information firsthand, um, health services is putting out lots of info. All right. So yeah, so this has been a, uh, a great discussion. So we've had some good presentations, good discussion. I just wanted to thank everybody for spending almost an hour and a half on a Wednesday evening with us. So I think I'd like to move to adjourn. Good to go. All right, thank you so much, James. Thank and you. thank you everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Have All right. a safe and a merry holiday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. James. Yes. James? Yeah. Uh, so I guess we still need to figure out a time for the January twelfth. I, I, you know, the Mac meets at seven p.m. So I always say seven p.m. to everything, but there's no reason. Okay. There's no reason that, that sounds good. Seven p.m. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, okay. thanks. So I'm going to create the Zoom stuff, and then I've still got the existing, the list um, that we created last year for the subcommittee. I still have all 30 some odd names. And since we're oh, talking great. about that, your group from next door, ask there if they are willing, you know, they can send their emails to you and you can forward them to me. You can give okay. them. 
you can give them my email and have them send me, they'd have to let me know that they want to be included on the illegal dumping advisory uh, distribution okay. list. But you can put my email out there, they can email me or they can all email you and you can send it to me. But okay. 30, what did you say, 33 people? That is just Yeah, fantastic. there are 33 people on the next door group. That is fantastic. Yeah. That is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. You were also yeah. mentioning about having um, like the highway patrol or the sheriff, they don't typically do that. So it may be something that we ask Lieutenant Buford. It might be something we could get assistance from maybe the explorers. So if they still oh. have the explorer program, I know Richmond has an active explorers program and they do event security. Um, they, they are very hands-on and actually I've seen, you know, some folks trying to tussle yeah. with you. teenagers, they'll tussle with you. But so we can do that. We can we can do some of that. We, we can um, reach out. But typically, as I've read the adopt a road programs for the state and for the county, they include monitors in the training. So what they'll tell you is that, you know, sort of what we've done every half hour or 15 minutes that we're out there, you have someone else switch. And the person that is doing the road monitoring is not even looking at the folks picking up the trash, both their eyes are on the traffic. It is their job to warn everybody to get the hell out the way if there's a car careening, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Adopt a road, adopt a highway programs are built. Um, because, well, not because. I'm assuming because getting a, a uniformed person out there, it may be challenging, if not expensive. Um, and it may look, you know, the chain gang yeah. kind of look or something like that, so. We just wanna, <laughs> we just wanna be able to do that area yeah. you know and feel safe so whatever yeah. it takes well, maybe it would it's, maybe even cones or something you know or and, and look yeah. we may, you may we may get the cones donated you know we might reach out to richard oliver at ace hardware i bought two cones from him twenty dollars i was <laughs> excited about it but i keep yeah, road, yeah. I, I have road flares i have cones i have emergency orange vests all of that stuff in the trunk of my oh. car um, oh wow so yeah. I, I keep a great deal of, uh, you know, um, of stuff in the trunk of my car to, to include cones. But um, I think we'll have a great meeting on the 12th. And um, I'm very yeah. happy to tell Supervisor Joy. Oh, what date did you go out, Mickey? What day was we it? We went this Saturday. The, the, uh, the, it was the 7th? Is that what it was? Saturday? Wait, what was it? 5th, I think. Wait. Okay. What is the date? Yeah. It was the 5th. Wow. <laughs> we did a Saturday, December 5th. Yeah. Okay. I we used to know what the dates were. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to have that so I can mention that to John when I see him tomorrow. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. Hey, happy, happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thank you, Miss Shirley, for coming on. We appreciate it. It doesn't say that you're muted, but I still can't hear you. Ms. Shirley, we're going to have to figure something out. I might have to bring my mask and come over to the house and fix this. I'm not convinced that. that, that Is this her phone? Is she the one on the phone? Mickey, are you on the phone? Uh, I mean, not Mickey, but um, Shirley, are you? Yeah, I wonder who that is on the phone because it, they're, that, they're muted, but... She surely wasn't. Surely. Now she is too. Yeah, now. Okay. Oh, I have been unmuted. Oh, ah, it, it is her. Okay. How was you on the phone? Okay. The only question I had was the person that's doing the San Pablo Dambro grant application, community okay. input, could they uh, do a presentation? Are they the, that's doing the San Pablo Dam Road? The San Pablo application, community input. Could they do a presentation and tell us exactly what they're going to do or how the grant is coming along? Okay. okay. So, Ms. Shirley, do this for me because I'll have to figure out who to contact because I'm not exactly sure which group and the grant you're talking about. Um, okay. So, I'll I'll be in the office tomorrow. Give me a call tomorrow. We can talk a little bit more. I can't, the audio is kind of bad. I couldn't hear everything.
But if you give me a call tomorrow, we can talk about it and I can figure out who the right person is and we can get them back. Because you may be talking uh -oh. about you may be talking about my San Pablo Dam Road. Is that the grant application you're talking about for a dam road? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I can tell you now, they will be coming back to the MAC, but we're having an advisory group meeting with that group. That's what I was talking to Mr. Plute about. So we'll be having our first meeting with the folks that conducted the study, and we'll be getting the results back from that. And then after that, then they'll be coming back to the MAC meeting at a future date. Oh, thank you. You're very welcome, Ms. Shirley. You have a good night. Okay. Okay, bye-bye.